Texas. We have open source intelligence analyst Ryan McBeth with us today and also alongside him, member of the Foreign Affairs Committee and retired U.S. Marine Corps rep Richard McCormick, Congressman McCormick. Great to have you both in with us today. Thank Good you, to be with you. Obviously, uh, we know that this administration, since the fall of Afghanistan, has had disastrous foreign policy. But where we are today seems to be now in a situation where everyone is looking to the next election and saying, do it now or never. Congressman McCormick, do you get that sense in the tinderbox that the world is under what they're looking at America's actions are? Well, I think one of the reasons this is happening is because of the weak foreign policy that Joe Biden's had. If you look at when, when the aggression has been by Russia or other foreign countries, when they see weakness, it's through strength that we endure peace. And I think that his uh, weak uh, propositions, the way he's handled foreign affairs, has led to this point in time. Uh, I, I'm a staunch supporter of Ukraine. I think what it brings to the table as far as grain and titanium and steel to that area is strategically important to us. We've given our word to them, both in the Budapest Accords and by NATO uh, agreement that we would support them. I think we need to finish this and finish it with strength. Obviously, that's part of the discussion and the funding that's tied up with the border as well that you guys are working on in Congress. I do want to ask about sort of the militarily. Uh, we see the U.S. attacking the Houthis, uh, but still the Red Sea, in addition to the grain, as you mentioned, so key in the Black Sea, Congressman McCormick, the Red Sea is, is under full-scale attack. Maersk is out, Shell's out. There's a, a whole global uh, economy here that's now going to drive up prices when we look at sort of where we are in the world. Ryan, what is your biggest concern? I think yesterday when people saw Pakistan and Iran bubbling up, they're going, wait, Pakistan also has nukes and Iran's pretty close. Absolutely. It, it actually surprised my... Oh, sorry. This one was for Ryan, Congressman. Sorry. Uh, thank you so much, Bianca. I think my main concern is that Iran is sort of like that one neighbor we have who lets their dogs run wild inside of the neighborhood. And when something like that happens, you have two choices. You can go after the dogs or you can go after that particular neighbor. Iran is the key to this whole thing. Imagine the Middle East as a puzzle. Right now, Iran has the box cover and they have three of the major pieces that go into that puzzle. And those are the three H's, the, the Houthis, Hamas and Hezbollah. So if we can fix Iran and get them to put down their dogs, we will have relative peace in the Middle East. Well, this administration has not done anything like that. It doesn't seem like they want to. The sanctions were not enforced. The Houthis were just redesignated, Congressman, but not, not for another like 28 days now, and they can still get visas. Yeah, and they're talking about they're not really our enemies. They're, of course they're our enemies. They're attacking us. They need to be taken out piecemeal every time they fire on our troops or on our allies. We need to strategically plan or tactically take them out every single time with countermeasures. You know, I think uh, when we look towards the world right now, finally, Ryan, I'll give you the last 20 seconds here. Uh, we are where we are. This is the current administration. This is, you know, Lloyd Austin is in this, you know, all of this. There's nothing we can change for nine months. So what would be your best uh, advice here if you were consulting with the president today, who I believe is heading to uh, his beach home for the weekend? The best advice would be to make Iran pay. There are certain ways that we can take out certain parts of infrastructure that can really uh, act as a pain point on Iran, and we can let them know that this behavior is inappropriate. Once they decide to uh, turn off the food for their dogs, it'll be a lot harder for their dogs to uh, run rampant inside the Middle East and cause trouble. Ryan McBeth, Congressman Richard McCormick. Uh, uh, oh, actually... One more thing. We do have more time. Okay, we have more time. Uh, Tim Scott endorsing Donald Trump, not Nikki Haley. Congressman Richard McCormick, your reaction? You know, endorsements only mean so much. Uh, I think we need to make our own decisions on who we support, who has the best policies. My support for Ron DeSantis is centered around one thing, and that is debt. Uh, there, he seems to be the king who takes debt the most seriously. And everybody says in the Republican Party, we're way out of control. We're going to ruin the economy in the future for our children. We have to pay this debt. That's why I support Ron DeSantis. And, and I know that uh, President Trump has all the advantages right now, and we'll play this out. I'm obviously going to support whoever wins the primary. Uh, I'm diehard against anybody who's going to beat Joe Biden, and I'll do everything I can to help that person across the finish line. Congressman McCormick, appreciate you weighing in on that. We want to squeeze that in. Obviously, a lot happening, not just in the uh, 
uh, geopolitical world, but also the political world, and they all are entwined as to who gets into the White House. Gentlemen, I appreciate it.